Hello! Welcome to this Price of Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at underpinning for basement conversions. In our previous tutorial, we took a look at underpinning an existing foundation with traditional underpinning, a rectangular method. In this video, we'll focus on the L-shape and T-shaped methods that can be used to perform a basement conversion. To start, we can either go to the module toolbar and select underpinning from the foundation category, or because we already have an underpinning module, in this case we can just use the shortcut of clicking the plus button here and adding another underpinning module. Let's expand our sketch pane so we have a better look. And this time, rather than using the rectangular method, we're going to switch this to an L shape. And this puts an underpinning beneath the existing foundation and then also pours a base for the basement floor. Depending on your structural engineer's requirements, you may also require a T-shape, which adds a boot or a footing to the exterior of the underpinning. Here we can set the total length of our underpinning, and we'll copy our previous example, which was a house with perimeter of 6 meters by 4 meters, or a total of 20 meters. In millimeters, this would be 20,000. And Price of Job is able to use this to come up with some basic estimates for the various stages involved. Next, we'll input our sizes setup. Here we can input the excavation depth, which will be 2.4 meters, or 2400 millimeters. And we'll adjust our sketch so we have a better view. Next, we can set our excavation width, and we can use the slide to adjust this to a maximum of 2000 millimeters, but if we need to excavate more, we can input the measurement manually. Then we can set the measurement for our existing foundation, which is shown here, 400 millimeters, and the thickness of the existing foundation, in this case, 250. And the depth of this existing foundation, which is currently set at 400 millimeters, let's adjust this slightly. Then we can specify the width of our new foundation, and normally this would match the thickness of the upper walls. And we can set the thickness for the base here, we can use the slider to adjust that, or adjust the measurement manually. And then for a T-shape, we have options to adjust the measurement of the left and right boot. If this were an L-shaped underpinning, we would have only the right boot to adjust here. Then we can adjust the offset, and the thickness of the dry packing. Then here we have the existing wall thickness, and here we'll adjust this to 330. If the existing foundation is protruding, a small section may be cut off to create a continuous wall surface from top to bottom. And then we can specify the maximum bay length, and this depends on our structural calculations. With underpinning, we can't simply excavate beneath the foundation of an entire side of a building, or else the building would collapse into the pit. So the excavation must be separated into bays. In this case, there would be four sequences. In the first stage, we would excavate bay number one, which would be here, 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 and here, and continuing around the foundation. Once these sections had the concrete poured and were backfilled, then we could move on to the second stage and excavate here, 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 moving around the foundation. When these were cast and backfilled, then we could move to sequence three, in which case this bay, this bay, and this bay, moving around, would all be excavated, concrete cast, and then backfilled, and then finally stage four. Depending on the condition of the ground and existing foundation, you may require more bays than this, or perhaps even fewer, but you must consult with the structural engineer to obtain these specifications. So in our example here, the maximum bay length is 1000 millimeters, which means that each one of these bays would be 1000 millimeters in length, meaning this wall would be 7 meters, and this wall would be 6. Because we're seeing our cross section face on, we cannot see the length of the bay in this measurement here. Once the concrete has been poured and cast, then dry pack can be used to fill the gap between the old and new foundations. And when we're done inputting our sizes, we can close this pane. And Price of Job sees that our bay length is 1000 millimeters, and the number of stages required here is four. If we needed more stages, we could increase that here by using the plus or minus symbols. Here we can check the box to say that all bays will be equal lengths, and the system has calculated a total of 20 bays, including four stages of five bays each, with a length of 1,000 millimeters. Then we can set the stage for trench excavation, 
and Price of Job has calculated the total excavation to be 160 cubic meters, and here in the estimate we can see that the cost of this stage is 16,000 pounds. This assumes that the excavation will be performed by hand. If we bring in a machine to do this excavation, we'll see the price of this stage automatically update, and then we can adjust it depending on the size of excavator we'll be using. In this case, we might use a three-ton excavator, and our price estimate for the excavation updates automatically, including the excavator, delivery and collection costs, the labor for the excavation of the trenches, as well as leveling and compacting of the bottoms, and the diesel required to power the machine. Next, we can take a look at disposal of soil. And here you'll note that despite the 160 cubic meters of soil that was excavated, we only have 27 cubic meters of soil to dispose. And this is the soil that is displaced by our foundation. The remainder is assumed to be used as backfill. If you will not be backfilling this area, you can select the box Dispose of All Soil. And you can see that the volume increases to 195 cubic meters. And the discrepancy here between 160 and 195 is due to the expansion of soil. And we can see that under the COG settings here that the soil expansion rate is set at 22%. And we can adjust this if necessary. And if we need to override the volume of soil to be disposed of, we can override that here. We can also select if the soil is to be disposed of by machine or by hand. And Price of Job has automatically calculated the number and size of skips that will require to remove this amount of soil. In this case, 31.9 8-yard skips. So we could select this to perhaps order a larger size skip. And that reduces the number to 21.2 and this will be combined with any other modules that will also be using skip disposal to ensure that none of our skips are sent away half empty. If this is the only module that we'll have that will be using a skip, we can just round this up to the next nearest whole number by pressing the plus symbol. Next we have the reinforcement stage, and here we can specify whether we'll be using rods or mesh, and then we can specify whether the reinforcement will be performed on both sides of the foundation, or just the left, or just the right, or just in the middle. In this case, we'll be reinforcing both sides. And then here we can select the type of reinforcement mesh we'll be using. And there's a variety of A and B category meshes. We'll stick with A393. Then we can set the cross spacing here in millimeters and select the cross rebar. Under the cog settings, we have adjustments for chairs spacing, reinforcement cover. And this is the gap between the reinforcement and the concrete surface. So if we increase this slightly, we'll see the gap on our reinforcement increase accordingly. Here we have our main rebar overlap and the cross rebar overlap. Next, let's take a look at formwork. Price of Job has calculated that we'll be requiring 41 square meters of formwork, but this assumes that the formwork will be buried or disposed of at the end of every stage. If we'll be extracting the formwork to reuse on each bay as we work our way around our underpinning, we can select this box here to reuse the formwork on every stage. And that reduces the formwork down to 10.4 square meters. Here we can select our plywood from the Price of Job library. And if we prefer to use an item that doesn't appear here, we can use the edit pack function to add a new material and add this to the Price of Job library. Then we can select our timber. In this case, we'll stick with 47 by 95 millimeters. Under the cog symbol, we can adjust the formwork length, formwork height, post spacing, and whaling spacing. Next for the concrete, Price of Job knows that we'll be working on this in four different stages, and has calculated the volume of concrete required for each stage as well as the part load charge. Here we can choose whether we'll be ordering ready mix, mix on site, or a concrete pump, and then we can set our concrete mix. Usually C35 or higher would be appropriate for a foundation. Under the COG settings, we can adjust the pot load charge and minimum concrete load, as well as the productivity of our concrete pump in cubic meters per day. If we'll be charged the pot load charge on every stage, we can leave this selected. And if we take a look at our concrete stage here in the estimate, if we deselect this, we can see that the pot load charge disappears. If we add that back in, we can see that the concrete pot load charge is added to our material costs. Likewise for the pump, we can leave this selected if we'll be charged for the pump for every stage, in which case we would require the concrete pump for four separate days, one day for each of our four stages. Next, we'll take a look at the dry pack. 
Here we can select our mix ratio, and under the cog settings, we can override the dry pack volume if necessary. And then for the backfill, if we're excavating this for a basement, we'll be disposing of all soil, so backfill won't be required. We'll just deselect this. And now because we've created two separate modules, both called underpinning, let's rename this one here. Instead of underpinning, we'll call this basement conversion. And that will identify this module as separate from the original underpinning module that we created. When we're done making our adjustments, we can see the reports tab, and here we'll have our detailed quotation. And we can set this to show various levels of pricing, either complete pricing breakdown, a breakdown by folder, or just grand total pricing. We can also choose to show advanced details, which allows us to show or hide the description, show the materials, the labor, plant and tool, and other costs, show or hide the pricing, and number of units. For more details on how to use the underpinning module, please watch our video on underpinning. Thank you for using Pricer Job.